turn with me this morning to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8. Hallelujah. How many know you're destined to win? And I mean you're destined to win in every situation. God's already worked out your victory. It's already done. But you've got to link up your faith with that, and you've got to believe. Amen. Romans chapter 8, we're going to go down here to verse 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for the good, to them that, are, that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate. Everybody say predestinate. To be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among uh, many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and whom He called, them He also justified, and to whom He justified, them He, he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, you are destined to win. You are predestined to win. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And, and really, uh, we've got we've to get to a point where we, it says here, in Christ, that we know who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We've got to begin to know that, uh, uh, we've got to know who we are. Amen. How many of your identity is so important? And that your identity in Christ is so important? Amen. And uh, uh, I, had, uh, I, had, I had my credit card uh, compromised Thursday night. And uh, Bank of America notified me that it was suspicious. And uh, praise God, you know, they, they're able to, you know, get a hold of these things now. And, uh, well, now I've got to cut up my card. But uh, praise God that, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on with identity theft. Did you hear what I said? Identity theft. What's done in the natural is being done in the spirit right now. Amen. Not amen. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And, uh, and so we've got to understand these things. You know, when Jesus was in the wilderness, Jesus, uh, uh, many times we, we talk about, you know, Jesus was there and he was tempted with, uh, uh, you know, turn these stones into bread. Uh, or if you jump off the pinnacle of the temple, uh, you know, won't angels, you know, pick you up and carry you? And, well, you know, we've got our focus on the wrong thing. How many know the Word of God says that uh, in each situation in those things, He said, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. If you be the Son of God, jump off this temple. And, and the temptation was really not the focus. The focus was His identity. If you be the Son of God. If you be a child of God this morning, what are you going to do with that? Are you a child of God? You know, the enemy will come in and he'll say, you haven't been acting like a child of God this week. <laughs> he'll try to steal your identity. And there's a lot of identity theft going on by the devil, by, by, by the enemy. The enemy comes in and he just, he's just trying to tell you, you're not who you think you are. And it's about time we rose up being conformed, predestined, Amen. To be conformed to the image. How many know we were, we were made in the image and the likeness of God? Hallelujah. And you know, the Word of God says that we need to renew our minds by the reading of the Word to who we are and what we have. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to know your identity in Christ Jesus. You need to know you are a born-again believer. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You are a child of the King. When you realize who you are, you'll begin to rise up in the Word of God. You'll rise up. You'll speak the Word with power and authority, and you'll see things change. Hallelujah. We've got to know our identity, and we need to know that we are destined to win. Hallelujah. You've been destined to win. You, 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 you're rising up. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh, success is not becoming someone else. You know, if I could just be like so-and-so, if I could, hey, if I, how many know that's coveting? How many know God already made you special? God already made you who you are. 
You are already made, my goodness, God already gave you gifts. He's made you destined to win, and everything you set your hand to is going to prosper. You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're, you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer in this world. Everything you set your hand to prospers. But you've got to know that. It's the knowing. It's the knowing. It's knowing who you are. It's knowing what you have. It's, it, it, it's not allowing identity theft. It's not allowing things to go on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, the enemy tries to do things. Just turn it around for God's glory. Enemy try to come in and take my money out of my bank account. What am I going to do? I'm going to talk about identity theft and, and, and give God glory and begin to get a more greater understanding of what's going on in the spirit. Right. Hallelujah. Give the devil a black eye. Come on. Hallelujah. And you know what's beautiful about that? God was in control of all that. Hallelujah. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with mentors. I've got mentors. mentors. I, I have people that I've looked up to. You know, I worked for Brother Copeland. And, and of course, Jerry Savelle uh, is, is a great mentor of mine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with mentors. Don't get me wrong. But you are unique. You, God, God will put people in your life to help mold who you are so that you can fulfill who you are, but you are unique. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's got something great with your name on it. I said God's got something great with your name on it. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 29. We love this verse. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Glory to God. It says, For I know... The thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. In another place it says his thoughts are as the sand of the sea. In other words, trillions of thoughts about you. Hallelujah. Now notice the very first thing. He said, these thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of shalom. Hallelujah. Thoughts of nothing lacking, nothing broken. Thoughts where everything's going right for you. Thoughts that you're destined to win in every situation. My thoughts are to get you already the victory before you even get in the battle. My thoughts toward you is working out a situation where you're blessed going in, blessed going out. My thoughts are continually working in your behalf. Hallelujah. That's God. And God loves you. <laughs> I mean, that's not a cliche. God really loves you. You need a revelation of that. Yeah, I mean a new revelation, a new manna. New revelation that God loves you in your situation this week. Amen. God just loves you. He's caring about you. He cares about everything you're going through. He, he wants to let you know that I've already, he's already worked it out. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Glory to God. So the very first area here, the thoughts that he's thinking toward you, that word peace is shalom in the Hebrew. It's, it's more than just, well, I have thoughts of just, you know, giving you a chill day. No, it's, it, that shalom is, is the fullness of the blessing. That shalom is, is everything that, that you could possibly need or desire. Then it goes on to say, and not of evil. My thoughts are not of evil towards you. My thoughts are not going to allow evil to come your way. My thoughts are to, to cause you to overcome evil. That you will not fail. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That everything you do is blessed. Everything you touch is blessed. Everything you, you, you go for. Hey, we well, say, well, that's a lot of blessing stuff. Are you one of them bless me people? Yeah, glory to God. Are you a bless me club? Well, I don't think it's a club, but we, we're going to bless one another. You do realize the alternative is curse. Well, I, I, think, I think that there's too much blessing. Well, then just be a little bit cursed. I mean, you think about it, people. We're, 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 you know, religion is just stupid. Well, I shouldn't use that word. It, it, it's, it's moronic. It, it's just awful. It's, 
<laughs> Religion just tries to get in your face and tell you how you're not going to, you know, make it and how, how in this world you'll have tribulation. Don't you know in this world you'll have tribulation? Yeah, you hear people quote that all the time, but they don't quote the rest of the verse. But be of good cheer. <laughs> I've overcome the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so how many know God in God is already done? Amen. It's predestined. You are predestined to win. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And then it goes on and it says, to give you an expected end. My thoughts are to give you your dreams. My thoughts are to give you your destiny. Hallelujah. That goes with identity. That goes with purpose. That goes with all the good things that God has put in you, those gifts that God put inside you to make you who you are. And as you rise up in those things and you realize God's already thought out my destiny, God's already thought out my purpose, I'm not trying to get there, God's already got me there, He saw the end from the beginning, He called the end from the beginning, he, from the beginning of time, he saw you, he thought about you, and he placed it. Oh, my. <laughs> well, how come we're not walking in it? Because you have free will. How I many know that his purpose and his desire is that all men might be saved? Not women, but men. No, no. How <laughs> I many know it is, it, it, the reference there is that we're all of mankind? Amen. Glory to God. Humans. We're all humans here. Amen. <laughs> I'm moving on right now. <laughs> but but he, he wants all to be saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But how many know that all are not saved? All are not saved. All are not healed. All are not delivered. All are not prospered. Why? Because of our free will. Because of our faith. What are we doing with our faith? Are we believing the word? Are we believing we have purpose? Are we believing in identity? Are we believing that God's already done these things? It's already worked out for us. Or are we believing that, well, you know, it's just the way it is. And glory to God. And, you know... Murphy's Law, when anything going to go wrong, is going to go wrong. And today, just been going wrong all day. Well, maybe it's going wrong all day because that's your confession. How many know you need to confess the Word? And how many know the Word has already confessed before you great things? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We, we cannot live without the Word. Now, you can, have, you can go to some other place and get, you know, uh, a, a great buzz, you know. <laughs> oh, we, 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 oh, we had such a great meeting. Uh, what did they teach? I don't know, but it just, I felt something. Well, maybe it was what you ate. I mean, you know, we need, we need the glory. We need jump in the river. We need all of that glory to God. We get that here. But how many know that we need more than anything to be conformed into His image by the renewing of our mind, by the Word, the Word, the Word. We're a Word church. You get the Word here. Amen. You don't get religion here. If you came here for religion, I'm sorry, you, you, you took the wrong turn. We are, we're a Word church. What does the Word say about it? I want to be so filled with the Word that I look like the Word. And how many know the Word was made flesh? How many know we are the flesh-made Word? Hallelujah. So we're rising up in the Word. We're rising up in our identity. We're knowing who we are in Christ, and we know we are destined to win. Hallelujah. To give us a purpose and a successful destiny. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Oh, the Word of God is so good. 23rd proverb, not Psalm, verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart, so are you. 
as you think in your spirit, as you get a hold of it in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion, as you, as you think, so are you. If you think you are successful, you will be successful. If you think that you're a failure, you will be a failure. That's what that is saying. As you think, how many of thinking is, is part of speaking? How many of thinking is words? You just don't hear them out loud. Words are how everything works. Your confession of faith got you saved. Your confession of faith gets you healed. Your confession of hate, faith, did I say hate? <laughs> Please don't write that in the captions. Uh, your confession of faith is what gets you prosperous and blessed, and everything in life comes by words. You're the only mammal, you're the only thing on this planet, there's nothing else that speaks but humans. Animals don't speak. I know you get a parrot once in a while, but and my dog can say mama, but... Uh, well, not this one, the one before it, but anyway. Uh, but we speak. We were made in His image after His likeness. We speak, and we're made to speak because we declare, we decree, we, we're kings. Can't do that if you don't speak. Thinking is speaking in your mind. Amen. But, how many know that uh, you need to speak it out loud? Thoughts are where all the warfare is. And all of that warfare in thoughts is to get you to speak out loud. As you're thinking those thoughts, worry. As you're thinking thoughts, it's getting you to a point where you say it never going to work out. You're not going to be able to pay that. You can't pay that. It's not going to work out. This time it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. And then out of your mouth you say, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. What happened? The words in your mind became the words of your mouth. How many know the word needs to be planted in your heart daily? This manna, this bread needs to be planted in your mind Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day Sunday. You, you need to get this word planted in your heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're not, if you're not getting the word, you're not going to speak the word. Now, you may speak a bunch of opinion. You might speak a bunch of junk. You might speak, you might speak a bunch of religion. But if you're not getting the word, you're not speaking the word, and the word works. You just keep getting the word, keep getting the word, keep getting the word. Oh, man, I get more word. And, and don't, don't spend all your time in Leviticus. Go find some scriptures that will speak to you concerning your situation. Amen. And, and, and write them down. Make them plain. So you can run with them every day. Write them on, on your mirror in your bathroom when you're getting ready. Write them down on a piece of paper. Take it out from time to time. Read the word. Have a little pocket Bible, whatever, but just get some, some scriptures that you're working. Because if you're not working the Word, it's not working. Come on. That's why you're so fired up on Sunday, but Monday comes and you say, how are we going to make it? 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 You're going to make it the same way you made it last week. The Word. Hallelujah. God. How many of Jesus is the Word? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. Thoughts of shalom. Jesus, he's, he has thoughts towards you. Amen. He's the word. His thoughts towards you are shalom. How many know our thoughts need to be shalom? Amen. We need to have the same thoughts. Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father thinking. And doing. As you look at that in, in the Greek, it, it's, it's talking about thinking. He knows the mind of God. We need to have the mind of Christ. 
But we need to see it. We need to know it. We need to do it. We need to have it. Hallelujah. And so as you get that word in you, the first area of thinking is the area of shalom. It's the area of nothing lacking, nothing broken in my life. I'm blessed going in, blessed going out. I need to think that way so the words that come out of my mouth line up with that. And the second thing I need to think is I need to think no evil. It's not coming. It's not winning over me. That devil is under my feet. Quit saying the devil's been on my back all week. It's just been one of those weeks. How can the devil be on your back when he's under your foot? How can, the, how can the enemy, how can you be in a situation where everything's going wrong except by the fact that you placed yourself there by your words? Well, I don't think words are that important. Well, then I guess you're not saved because it was words that got you saved. And that's the most important thing. Words are what God gave us as a gift. Words matter. Words change things. Hallelujah. Ooh, this is the greatest year of your life so far. You know, the year 22, uh, this is 2022. 22 in the Hebrew means light. Hallelujah. Light. This is a year of light. There's always a good idea of a number and a bad idea of a number. The bad idea of this year is chaos. 22 is chaos. I think there's a lot of chaos going on in the world today, but how many know we're not of this world? We're of a different kingdom. So we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't identify with the negative of chaos. We identify with light. We identify with the 22 aspects of the menorah. We, we identify with the glory. We, we identify with the anointing. We identify with all of this light. We identify with the light of the word. We identify with the light of the world, which is Jesus. We identify with the light. Come on, hallelujah. You are the lights of the world. You are a light upon a hill. This year, you are a light. How many know this church is going to be a lighthouse? I say that's beginning in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't despise small beginnings. We, we're going somewhere. Come on, glory to God. Woo! There's a lighthouse. And, you know, in the spirit, people can see the lighthouse. We may, you know, one of the things when we moved into this place, that people say, where are you? People drive by all the time. You never know. It's because it's set back. But how many know when that light of the lighthouse, they, they'll be so attracted to it, they'll be driving down the road and go, what's that? Amen. Light. This year, there's light. Oh, you're destined to win. Come on. Amen. Thoughts of no evil. And thoughts of my destiny. Yeah, you're supposed to be thinking about your purpose and destiny. You're supposed to be thinking about those things. Amen? Amen? And you need to get a hold of God. Once you get a hold of God and you know that you know what God has said, there's no more thinking about it. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when, when uh, the Lord dealt with me about, uh, you know, I, I traveled for over 25 years. I was doing television and conferences, all these things. And the Lord said, I want you to start a church in Rockwall. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, scared, I'm booked up every week all over the place. And, and the Lord said, I want you to start a church. I said, no, no, thanks. I said, I love what I do. Everything's great. He said, you're not listening. He said, I've got a purpose and a destiny. I've got some things to do with you concerning the last harvest. And I'm positioning right now churches throughout the world. I'm positioning them for this last harvest. And I'm positioning things and putting things together. And when I saw it, there was no question about whether to go back or do this or do that because now you get on that track. How many know once you've heard from God, you don't look back? A lot of people have turned to salt. And even though 
for the salt of the world, that's not how you do it. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to keep your, your hand on the plow. Keep moving forward. Once you get a hold of what God hath said, you just do it. Amen. And you don't question things. Amen. So, you know, we could have done it this way. We could have done, no, no, it doesn't matter about all that. Whew, we're moving in it. We're pressing in. We're pressing in. You're pressing into something right now. Come on. Something wonderful. Turn with me over here to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. How many love the Word of God? Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, go down here to uh, verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Another translation says, we are his masterpiece. How many of you are God's masterpiece? Created, created. You know, God didn't just create your eyes and your ears and your, you know, your organs and your body and all that. He created your identity. And your identity is in Christ. He created all these things. He didn't just create, you know, we oftentimes we just think in the natural. He created your spirit. Sweet spirit. He created things in you. You know, when my, my daughters were uh, in the womb, we would speak over them and we would speak a sweet spirit. How many of we were creating? How many of we are in the creative process with God? The things you say. Uh, at the foundation of the world, everything that was being created, uh, even though God was creating everything, God said to Adam, I want you to name everything. So I want you to name all the animals. Why? He said, I want you, you. He said, I created the natural part on that. He said, I want you to create identity. I mean, names create identity. <laughs> you, you, you know, if you have a sweet little cat and, and you name it, you know, Lucifer. I saw that cartoon. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if, if you name your cat Lucifer, th that is going to be something that, that uh, you're not going to want the result. <laughs> you name it Fluffy <laughs> or Sweetie. Sweetie would be even better. Uh, how many of you, that's when you're constantly speaking over that, uh, that cat, because that's the name. Whatever you name it. How many know you name, are you talking about name it and claim it? Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, we, name things, we name everything. You name everything. You might think you don't name things, but you name everything. You name your kids. You named your business. We named this church. We, we could have called it Little Faith. We decided with Great Faith. You know, we thought we'd go with that. Little Faith just seemed like not. not. <laughs> How many know you, you just got to begin to realize you name stuff all the time? Honey, go get that out of the junk drawer. That just came up in my spirit right there. <laughs> you name the drawer. You name everything. So, so stop <laughs> with this idea that we don't name things. We name it. We were created. Adam cre named all the animals. We name stuff all the time. What a glorious thing that is to be able to name your children. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You name things. Woo, hallelujah. You're naming things. You're, you're naming your victories. You're naming your business. You're naming your, 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 your future finances. You're naming your, the fact that you're destined to win. Amen. You're created. You are His masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. You're created, all of you, not just the natural part, the spirit, every, every part of you. Created in Christ Jesus to good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. God created you for good works for His glory. And He did that before you were born. Your whole life is, is destined to bring God glory. 
I don't know about you, but the greatest thing I want in my life is to bring God glory. If your focus is right, you'll do it right. If your focus is, I want to do something for the Lord, instead of, I've got to do something for the Lord, or I don't have time to do it for the Lord, or I'm more important than the Lord, or you know, all these things that we come up with, but how many know you were created to bring glory to God? That's why you were created. Amen. Well, I'm just too busy. You're too busy for God. Christ God is not too busy for you. We've got to get to a point where we identify with God and we realize He created us. We are His masterpiece of workmanship for good works, for His glory. I, I, I want to do something for God today. Come on, somebody. Say, I'm going to do something for God today. Hallelujah. Glory be. That should be our heart every day. Amen? There's something deep down inside of us that we, that we want to do something great for God. There's greatness in every one of you because there is God in every one of you. And that God in you is great. Hallelujah. And so as you realize that you're destined to win, you're realizing it's the greatness of God in you that's made you that way. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 5. Glory to God. 1 John Chapter 5. I go down here to uh, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. <laughs> and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is linked up with everything you need. Faith is linked up with you overcoming the world. Faith is linked up in the fact that you're already an overcomer, but you've got to believe it. You've got to believe you're blessed this week. You've got to believe that you're blessed exceeding abundantly above anything you could ask or dream. You're so blessed, you're, so, you're just so, whoo, you are the apple of His eye. Hallelujah. You walk in divine favor. You have favor. You, you, everywhere you go, people are chasing you down to bless you. I expect those things. I've walked in that <laughs> for years where I just expect blessing. People say, well, how can you just expect blessing all the time? How can you, how, who do you think you are? I'm a child of the king. I'm his beloved. I'm blessed going in, blessed going out. I, I, I'm destined to win. You're destined to win. Whatever you set in your hand to this week, you're destined to win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not, that's not, uh, that's not arrogance. That, matter of fact, <laughs> that's humility. Humility is understanding where you get your strength from, where you get blessed from. It's, see, when, <laughs> when we realize that it's all Him, it's all Jesus. Everything is already done, and he did it and paid for it in his own blood. Put us right back in position for blessing. Hallelujah. Believing. Believing. It, it's by faith. Believing that God loves you and that you're destined to win. Believing that. That's how you overcome the world. Jesus is the author and finisher He's the author, before the foundation of the world, of your life. He's the author and finisher of your faith. Turn with me to Philippians. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. And go down here to verse, uh, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Brethren, <laughs> Paul, Paul's talking here. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, you know, everything. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Are you seeing that? Hallelujah. Matter of fact, go back here to verse... Uh, Go 
Go back to verse uh, 12. Not as though <clears throat> I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after if I may, <clears throat> may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended in Christ Jesus. In other words, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm there yet. None of you are perfect. Come on. We're only perfect in the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of the Father because of the blood of Jesus. You're as white as snow because of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're, we're pressing in. We're pressing towards a mark. We're, we're moving forward. And the whole key is don't look back. Don't let yesterday's defeats uh, determine your future. Don't, don't allow yesterday's failures to determine tomorrow's victories. Yesterday was training. Tomorrow is victory. Amen. Quit thinking about what, what you've been going through and all this. And, you know, if I had just gone to a better college or if I had just done this or if I hadn't have done that, if I, if I would have just blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter about yesterday. Yesterday cannot do anything except bring you down and steal the words of your mouth. Now, you can examine good things from yesterday to remind yourself that God is a good God. David reminded himself of the bear and the lion before he came up against the giant. Amen. But, but don't spend your time thinking about failures that kept you from victory because those things are over. Your future is determined to win. Predestined. Blessed. You've been redeemed of the curse. You are blessed. Not some glad morning, but this morning. Every day. Hallelujah. Don't, don't spend one more, one more moment, not a single nanosecond, thinking about anything negative of the past. It's over. It's under the blood. It's over. Woohoo! Glory to God. Whatever, whatever it is that that caused you to not want to move forward. Now rise up, pull up your bootstraps, and move forward and press towards the mark. Hallelujah. And don't look back. Amen. Paul got that. Paul understood that. Amen. <clears throat> and that's where we need to be. <clears throat> we need to press into our promised land. Quit looking at Egypt. You know, <laughs> there was a whole group of them that said, we had it better in Egypt. They're all murmuring. We need to go back to Egypt. How was that better? You were slaves. That was, I mean, <laughs> well, it was, yeah, we had food. You know, I mean, they'll think of something good in, in the mess that they were in. But I think I'll go back to what, whatever. There are people like that all the time. We'll go back to a situation that was awful because they don't want to move forward. And there was a promised land right there in front of them. They didn't need to spend 40 seconds in the wilderness. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to end this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What would you do in your life if you knew you could not fail. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, well, I, I, I was believing it up until you said that. Now, I don't know. I, 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 if I tried that, it probably wouldn't work. And, and, you know, I've tried it before and it didn't work. And, and I, you know. <clears throat> Did God say it? Yeah. Well, then it's going to work. Now, you just need to link yourself up with His wisdom. Because God will give you all the wisdom you need. He said, I'm not hiding it under a bushel. I'm not hiding my wisdom from you. I'm trying to get it in you. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Go down here, verse 57. But thanks be to God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. But thanks be to God, which gives us 
the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has already paid the price. He's already done it. It's already paid for. Your victory is already done. Your victory is already planned out. Your victory is you're already lined up in the cross. You're already lined up for it. Glory to God. You are blessed. Hallelujah. I said you're blessed. Hallelujah. You have the victory. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, you have the victory. Whatever you're going through, whatever battle, whether it's a health problem, whether it's a financial problem, whatever your situation might be, you already have the victory. You're not trying to convince God. You're not trying to change things. You're not trying to do this. You just need to walk by faith and receive. Well, how do I receive? How do I receive, Pastor? You say, thank you. Same way you receive a hamburger. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Amen. I, I, never, I never saw anybody. You know, somebody say, well, I'd like to give you this hamburger. Oh, let me see how to receive this. Oh, I, I pray I'll be able to hold it in my hand. Oh, I, I don't know what I... Just take it. Just take the burger. Glory to God. <laughs> Say, I'm taking the burger. Say, I'm taking the blessing because I'm destined to win in every area of my life, I will become everything God has made me to be. I am an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I have the victory. I'm destined to win. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whew. And I feel the anointing you have a need this morning, slip up your hand. You got a need? Amen. Come up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The glory of God. Lift up your hands to heaven joy of the Lord your strength, but there's an empowerment that's coming on you right there. Glory. More, 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 more rivers. There you go. I thank you for insights, ideas, concepts. I thank you, Lord God, that <laughs> for the mind of Christ and that as soon as he puts her hands to the plow, <laughs> she won't look back. So rise up and be strong and bold with the power of the Holy Spirit. The glory of God's on you and it will not leave you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody else, you have a need. Somebody else. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can't come against people's wills and so many times we, we want things our way. But I pray right now for the family. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your peace and your comfort is pouring out to them. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are taking what the enemy means for evil that you're turning it around for good. Peace. Not like the world knows. But the peace of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This week's going to be great. Amen.